where we are celebrating our theme of makers. That's right, makers of all types and sizes, shapes, and colors. Um, we're excited to bring you here to the Met and explore how people around the world find inspiration through materials and technology. Uh, we have art making act activities throughout the gallery, so be sure when you get inside, just explore all the areas of the museum. We have plenty of art making activities inside for you. And uh, World Culture Festival Makers at the Met is made possible in part by Council Member Keith Powers. So thank you very much, Council Member Powers. <laughs> And this is what they call a welcome or greeting song. Now among many of the tribes traditionally, when they go to visit another group, they always sing a song to say hello or to welcome or to be there. And I think that's a great way to meet or greet someone. I always tell people the next time you go to see a friend of yours and you knock on the door, and you knock on the door, when they open the door, Sing them a song, and I can guarantee they're going to have a big smile on their face, and they're going to say, wow, it's so good to see you. Well, that's the good way to greet someone. So that was our greeting song for you today. We're called the Thunderbird American Indian Dancers, and I'm so happy that the Metropolitan Museum has invited us to be part of the World Culture Festival. You know, Native American culture is still alive today. It has been alive for thousands of years. And we're just so happy that they invite us to be here to celebrate as being part of the culture of the world, which we are, like everyone else. I think that's really great. But we come from different tribes and different parts of the country. So before we start, I'd like to take a minute to introduce the members of the group that we have here today, tell you who they are, where they come from, what tribes they come from, and their Native American names. Starting way down on my right-hand side is a young lady. She's from two tribes. She's from the Cherokee tribe of North Carolina and the Taino tribe, and they come from a small group of islands down in the Caribbean. And her name is Marie Conchwoman. Conchwoman down there. This young man comes all the way from the state of Oklahoma. He is from the Kiowa tribe. This is Matthew Corneater. The next young man who's descended from a group of Native American people who used to live right across the river in New Jersey many years ago. They have since moved from New Jersey, now live in the state of Oklahoma. Today they're called the Delaware, but he is descended from the original Lenape tribe of New Jersey. This is Alan Shooting Star. And myself, I'm from two tribes. My father's from the Hopi tribe from Arizona, so they gave me a Hopi name. My mother's from the Winnebago tribe from Nebraska, so they gave me a Winnebago name. My given name is Lewis, my Hopi name is Cloud Standing Straight in the Sky, and my Winnebago name is Green Rainbow. That's who I am. All right, thank you. We'd like to start by doing a few dances for you. They come from a group of Native American people that live right here in New York State and just over the border. They're called the Haudenosaunee, people of the Longhouse or the Iroquois. And this first dance we'd like to do for you is a dance they call the fish dance. They say the origin of the dance goes back many, many years ago when the young men and the boys used to go out in their canoes into the many lakes and rivers in New York State. And they would throw their fishing nets out into the water. And as they pulled those fishing nets back into their canoes, they would look down into the water and they'd watch the fish as they wiggled and squirmed trying to get out of the fishermen's nets. Well, the young boys and the men thought that was such an exciting movement that when they went back to the longhouse, they made up a dance in which they tried to copy or imitate those movements of the fish. Fish dance of the Iroquois. Thank <laughs> you. 
smoke to go out. Now on certain days during the winter time, there wasn't enough wind or draft that came in the doorways to carry the smoke out the smoke hole. So what the people would do is they would get together, get very close to the fires, and they would dance. And as they moved their feet and they moved their bodies, this would help to make enough wind or draft to carry the smoke out the smoke hole. So they call that dance the smoke dance. South Dakota depended on the buffaloes for many, many things. Number one, of course, the buffalo was their source of food. Number two, the buffalo hides they would use to make their houses or teepees. Number three, the buffalo skin they would use to make their clothes. And number four, the buffalo bones they would use to make spoons, knives, needles to sew with. And the boys and girls used to take the buffalo ribs, which are very, very big. They would tie those together and they'd make a sled out of it that they could slide down the grassy hills in North and South Dakota. But three or four hundred years ago, the buffaloes didn't stay in one place. They wandered all over North and South Dakota. And because the people depended on the buffaloes for so many things, wherever the buffaloes would go, that's where the people would go. So the people moved from one camping area to a new camping area very often. But before they moved into a new camping area, they would send out a group of dancers. And these dancers would go into the new camping area and they would dance. But they were doing something else that was very, very important because out on the Great Plains, there's this very tall grass that grows. Not many trees, but a lot of tall grass. And what these dancers were doing is they were dancing, they were taking their feet, and they were crushing down the tall grass. So when the rest of the people arrived, they'd have a nice, smooth, flat area to put up their camp. And they might send out as many as 100 or 150 dancers. They might be out there for a couple of days dancing, and at that amount of time, they'd be able to crush down a nice large area for the camp. So they call that dance the grass dance. going to go out to New Mexico for our next dance. They understand that this dance originated among the Taos Pueblo people in New Mexico. And then during the dance, the dancer picks up each one of the hoops without using their hands and then dances in and out of the hoops while keeping in time with the rhythm of the drum. Now they say the dance was created to test the skills of the dancers. And the more hoops a dancer uses, the more skilled they are considered. Most of the dancers start out with one hoop, go on to two hoops, three hoops, and dance with as many hoops as they can. Each February out in Arizona at the Herd Museum, they have what they call 
the National Hoop Dance Championships. And during that weekend, for three days, hundreds of hoop dancers come there from all over the United States and Canada, and they compete to see who's going to be chosen that year as a championship hoop dancer. Now, in past years, the championship hoop dancer prize has gone to mostly the men, but I'm very happy today to say that today the women are participating, and many of the women now are taking the title of championship hoop dancer of the year. And so I'm very, very pleased to present our young lady here. She's been doing this dance now for about six or seven years. She's a very accomplished hoop dancer, and we're hoping very soon to send her out to Phoenix, Arizona as a New York York City representative in the Women's Challenge. So, this is a hoop dance now from the Taos Pueblo people of New Mexico. is not just the United States. It's two continents, North America and South America. That's where the Native American people come from. I have no idea how many Native people there are in Canada. I have no idea how many there are in Mexico, and I certainly have no idea how many they are in South America. But I'm sure I wouldn't be too wrong if I were to tell you today that there are millions millions of Native American people living in North and South America. And yes, I think the important thing to remember is we are still here. And we're going to be here. We're going to be here for a long time to come. Thank you very much for your kind attention.